Semiconductor Insights presents the teardown of the Atari 2600, old versus new. Let's go back to a simpler time, shall we, when Bananarama was still cool and Mr. T was a pop icon? In 1986, Atari repackaged their original Atari, first released in 1977, as the new 2600. Atari wasn't the first company to introduce the home console, but they were the first to make it popular. It featured such hits as Pac-Man, Qbert, and E.T. E.T.? God, that game sucked! Anyways, Atari dominated the video game industry until Nintendo finally dethroned them with the release of the NES. Shown above is a teardown of my very own Atari 2600. I was sad to see it destroyed, but it had stopped working years ago, so it died for a good cause. Let's identify some of the chips that helped create video game history, and made it what it is today. UMC manufactured most of the chips on the Atari, including the UMC 6526P1. It was the heart of the Atari, responsible for generating the picture on your TV set, as well as providing access to the features in the hardware for generating its graphics. This chip was referred to as the Television Interface Adapter, or TIA for short. The UMC 6532 was a standard IC, and was responsible for the 2600's input and output. It contained two 8-bit bidirectional I.O. ports and over 128 bytes of ASRAM to help it manage the I.O. This chip is also known as the Peripheral Interface Adapter, or PIA. Lastly, the UMC 6507 is the CPU of the Atari 2600. It had 13 external address lines, and because of these address lines, the CPU can only access 8 kilobytes of RAM directly. To put it all in perspective, the Atari operated at 1.19 MHz. The PS3 and the Xbox 360 operate just a bit more faster at 3.2 GHz. That's almost 2,000 times faster. To put it into perspective how far gaming has come, let's take a look at what the Atari 2600 would look like if it was made 20 years later. In 2005, Legendary Engineering was commissioned by Atari to re-release the 2600 and have 40 games built into the console. The Atari Flashback 2 was released, and to put into perspective the growth of technology since 1986, Legendary Engineering was able to fit the CPU, the TIA, and the PIA onto one Xilinx FPGA. They fit all that functionality on one chip and still had room for 40 classic Atari games. E.T. was not one of those 40 games. See for yourself the difference in the size of the board and the number of components, or lack thereof, on the Atari Flashback 2. In terms of board size, the Flashback 2 board is about one-third the size of the Atari 2600. This concludes our presentation on the Atari 2600 Teardown. For more information, please visit www.semiconductor.com. Thank you for joining us today. But if you'll excuse me, I'm going to figure out how to get E.T. out of this stupid pit. What an awful, awful game.